Well, guess what? As I have always said, and as we always say on this program, go woke, go broke. This depraved inability to condemn calls for genocide is already having massive consequences. I mean, after the news of the hearings went around the globe, donors started closing their checkbooks. UPenn, whose president was the second you saw there in that grab, just lost a $100 million commitment from a hedge fund billionaire who was prepared to stump up for a new Center for Innovation in Finance. Meanwhile, at Harvard, longtime donors are slashing their annual contribution to just $1 in protest. And the very beleaguered Ivy League is now offering mega donor status, which allows special treatment for a donor's kid come admissions time, slashing that down to just $2 million, cutting the price of admission, so to speak, by 90% from its previous threshold of $20 million. Now, the head of the University of Pennsylvania, well, <clears throat> she's in a bit of trouble here. After that testimony, she issued this groveling apology, though it clearly wasn't enough for that donor, or as we'll see, for the administration of that school. There was a moment during yesterday's congressional hearing on anti-Semitism when I was asked if a call for the genocide of Jewish people on our campus would violate our policies. In that moment, I was focused on our university's longstanding policies aligned with the US Constitution, which say that speech alone is not punishable. I was not focused on, but I should have been, the irrefutable fact that a call for genocide of Jewish people is a call for some of the most terrible violence human beings can perpetrate. Well, guess what? The Board of Trustees saw through that little hostage video, and now she is gone, residing just an hour ago before this show went to air. Meanwhile, at Harvard, President Claudine Gay, who told Congress that calls for genocide depended on the context, has now apologized for not properly conveying what she called, quote, my truth unquote, not my struggle, my truth, when she spoke to Congress. Her testimony has sparked a million memes like this copy of Adolf Hitler's Mind Context <laughs> put out by Harvard University Press. Now, all of this idiocy on the part of these presidents of prestigious universities is starting to raise massive questions about the qualifications of the leaders that these people are putting in charge of these schools. Harvard's president, Claudine Gay, for example, well, it turns out that this distinguished academic leader has only published 11 peer-reviewed papers in her entire academic career and not authored one book. For context, many professors managed to publish 11 papers in a single year. Now, it's probably then correct to assume that McGill and Gay and the others who are leading America's universities have been selected not for their brilliance, but for their politics and their ability to show their DEI commitments and for their skills as academic political commissars who will enforce the left's narratives on their campuses, creating new generations of professionals and professors to go out and spread the woke word. It's all quite grim and increasingly leads to the sense that American academia and perhaps Australian academia as well is hopelessly broken, even with McGill's resignation. The whole edifice, if you ask me, needs to be torn down and restarted, junking woke political classes and fake degrees and getting back to the fundamentals.